most people understand uh, that to find the third side of a triangle, to find any side of a triangle, uh, a right triangle, you can use Pythagorean theorem, um, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. But at the same time, there are other ways to get, especially on a standardized test like the uh, GRE, GMAT, or the SAT, or the ACT, um, generally there are other simpler ways to get to a side uh, using the Pythagorean triple concept. So this is a Pythagorean triple triangle because it allows you to have three, four, five. The five will always be the hypotenuse. And on this particular case, you can have five, 12, 13. Again, 13 is the uh, hypotenuse. <clears throat> the main idea here is to look at a triangle like this triangle up here and recognize that 26 and 24 have a common term. And that common term in this case, the highest common term you have for both of them is uh, 2. So you could go ahead and divide by 2 for both of them. When you do that for the top one, you get 13. You do that for the bottom one, you get um, 12. And at this stage, this tells you that because of the 13 and 12 there, it resembles this Pythagorean triple. It's telling us that this side Y must be the 5 side. Now notice I didn't say the this the y is 5 it is the 5 side because you recognize that this 26 and 24 had been multiplied by 2 that's why they were 26 and 24 because you actually multiply 13 by 2 to get to 26 and 12 by 2 to get to 24 so when you find out that this y is the 5 side you need to multiply it by 2 which was the number you divided the 26 and 24 by so as a result, we can say y is going to be 5 but times 2. So y is 10. Now, at this stage, we're also trying to figure out the x at this point. So we need to draw a new triangle that looks like this. Recognizing that there is a 6 on this bottom side, the y is now 10. And then at this stage, you're going to ask yourself, well, what... Um, what do I have in common for my 10 and 6? Again, 2 is common, so we can go ahead and divide that by 2, divide that by 2, so we get a 5 there, we get a 3 there. Again, this is showing that this side must be a 4 if we go with this um, Pythagorean triple um, triangle up here. So as a result, we know this side x would be 4, but we have to multiply the 4 by 2 because we divided the 6 and 10 by 2. So as a result, the x, as a result, the x will be 8. So at this point, x is 8 and y is 10. We can solve the triangle down here using the same concept. Just looking at, for example, we start with 20, 16, trying to find this y. We recognize that 20 and 16 have something in common. So again, we use the same concept. The, the the one thing they both have in common, the highest thing they have in common is 4. So divide by 4 and divide by 4. You always go with the highest thing they have in common. So that produces a 4 here and it produces a 5 here, which tells us that, which tells us that this y must be the 3 side using this Pythagorean triple concept, the 3, 4, 5 rule. So because of that, we can go ahead and say, because of that, we can go ahead and say that um, uh, y is equal to is going to equal to the three side, but we have to multiply by four, which is the thing we divided by here and here. So we multiply by four. So as a result, we have a situation where this is going to equal to twelve. So now we know the y is twelve. As a result of that, we can then draw another triangle, which says that the y is 12, the hypotenuse is 15, and we're looking for the x. Again, we ask ourselves, what is common to 12 and 15? Well, the highest thing common to 12 and 15 is 3. So divide by 3, divide by 3. That produces a 4 side there, produces a 5 side there, which tells us that it must be a 3, 4, 5 triangle, telling us that this side x must be the 3 side, but we have to multiply that 3 by what we divided these guys by, which is 3. So as a result, we know this is the 3 side, but we need to multiply it by 3, giving us 9. 
So that's how we could solve for the x, y, the x, y, then the x, y in both of these uh, triangle problems. Thank you.